we talked about simple harmonic motion a while back when we talked about kinematics. And simple harmonic motion is circular motion about some point at constant speed. So the speed of the object is not changing. The velocity of the object is constantly changing because its direction is constantly changing as it goes around in a circle. So how does uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motion, how are they related? Well, if we look at a, an object in simple, sorry, in a uniform circular motion, so you have some object here, some distance capital X away from the center. So that's the radius. I'm going to call the radius capital X, the amplitude, right? That's just a, a number that doesn't change. That's the distance. And I want to know what the projection is along the x-axis. How much of this length capital X is projected along the x-axis if the angle here from the x-axis is theta? Well, that's simple trigonometry, right? This is a right triangle. This is a right triangle. Capital X is the hypotenuse of that triangle. Small x is the adjacent side. So the relationship between adjacent side and hypotenuse is cosine. So the adjacent side is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. But this is uniform circular motion. So the angle theta is equal to, because theta changes with time as this thing goes around. It depends on how fast is it spinning, the angular speed, and how long has it been spinning, the time. Right? So this is the angular version of x is equal to v times t. Right? That's the linear equivalent. This is the angular. The angular displacement is equal to the angular velocity times time. So I'm going to plug in, I'm going to substitute theta for omega times time. Omega is the angular speed. Well, in radians, this goes around once, or 2 pi radians, every period. A period is how long does it take to make one completion of an oscillation or periodic motion. So this goes around once, that's the period. The angle goes through 2 pi radians, or 360 degrees, but the, the SI unit for angle is radian. So now I'm going to plug 2 pi in, over the period in for omega. I applied, plugged in theta up here. So in the end, my equation, x, length x is equal to the total radius of the orbit or the circular motion, which is the amplitude here, capital X, times the cosine of 2 pi, right in here, times time over the period. That is the exact same equation as the one we got for simple harmonic motion. So the projection of an object under uniform circular motion looks like simple harmonic motion. And this is important uh, for a number of reasons, but one classic example is the moons of Jupiter. Looking at it from above, the moons of Jupiter are approximately circular in orbit. But from Earth, we're not looking at the moons of Jupiter from above. We're looking at it at the same plane. So imagine rather than looking at a hula hoop, I turn that hula hoop on the side. So rather than this motion, we have the planet Jupiter, the great red spot there, and we have four moons all in a plane. All of these moons, these, I drew these little stars here, all of these moons are in circular orbits around Jupiter. We can only see the projection, how far they are away from Jupiter. This distance is the x displacement for each moon. Now the moon has a total radius, right? Each moon has a different radius. Each moon has a different period. But we can measure these things by looking at where the moons are from night to night to night. And Galileo Galilei, one of the first person recorded in history to turn a telescope to the heavens and take observations, noted four stars orbiting the planet Jupiter. First time that anything was discovered that wasn't orbiting Earth in the Earth-centered universe idea. He was able to use this to calculate what the period and amplitude or radius of the orbits were, at least relative to the size of Jupiter. 
and was able to actually calculate the periods of these moons using simple harmonic motion and uniform circular motion equations. That's huge. So quickly after the discovery, if you, you could do this experiment yourself, if you just want to take a pair of binoculars or a small telescope, look at Jupiter and note where these four stars, sometimes you only see three or two because the moon is either in front of or behind Jupiter, and plot those positions with time and you see four pretty sine waves show up. And those four sine waves then will tell you, um, or periodic waves, will tell you what the period is for each of the four planets, or four moons. And we call them the Galilean moons after Galileo's discovery. 